Hello, hello. Welcome back to Black. Bleh. Welcome back to Blackjack. I'm Blackjack Aviani. Hi. And today we're going to watch Dragon Sword versus Mecha Godzilla. I have absolutely no experience with either of them. Yay! And remember my last Mech Battle reaction. It was so bad that I considered deleting it. I was just the whole time but i was also sick what did i have then food poisoning was it i don't remember it was something uh. okay so let's get to watching actually no let's not because that's riz grestar's signature tech no i love riz grestar his reactions are so cool he doesn't seem to do them much anymore, though. This is a shame. Whether they are benevolent deities or harbingers of doom, dragons are freaking awesome. Yes, Hell they are. Yeah, especially the I red kind, like the Dragon Zord, piloted by the Green Power Ranger, and Kiru, the dangerous and mysterious Mecha Godzilla. Yay! He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And oh, it's I'm going to be Wiz this their time. Weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. <laughs> After being stuck in a garbage can for 10,000 years, the evil Rita Repulsa <laughs> was understandably pretty pissed. So, she decided to destroy the world. Hey, I'd be mad too, but that's a hell of a hot take. And so, Earth's guardian, Zordon, put a plan into motion. I'm Five in a two. teenagers would defend the planet with their dinosaurs. Okay. They were the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. You'd think a bunch of kids in spandex would have a tough time fighting an ancient witch, but they got used to taking out her weekly monsters pretty quick, like a normal nine to five, just yeah. with giant robots. But Rita and had school. a plan. Yeah. If her creatures could not defeat the heroes, she would create her tougher. own ranger. The Green Ranger, along with his robo reptile, the Dragon Zord. <laughs> I think that would kind of impact that thing's ability as a weapon. At 90 meters tall and nearly 200 tons, the Dragon Zord proved a match for the other Rangers, even their Megazord. Semi sentient, so it's kind of like the Divine Beast. Because I got the feeling that those things were semi-aware in like an AI sort of way. Built over 10,000 years ago. Well, hey, they are like the Divine Beasts. Controlled by the Dragon Dagger. So this is a power of the Green Dragon Power Coin. So if that thing gets knocked loose... Dragon Zord's got a heavy-duty arsenal, like finger missiles. It's like flicking the gunk from under your nails at people, but it explodes. Why do you have gunk under your fingers? To flick at people. It Duh. doesn't get gunk that under the nails. That fan isn't just a cool headpiece. Just a it shoots energy thing. waves. And if D-Zord feels like stomping around, watch out for literally <laughs> shocking <laughs> earthquakes. <laughs> Despite such long-range weaponry, the Dragon Sword seems best suited to fighting up close with its strong grappling arms and highly flexible drill tail. This drill is so impressive, it cut through a cocoon prison even the supposedly superior Megazord couldn't escape. Yeah, cool, that cool. thing's five swords in one! Guess teamwork doesn't always make the dream work. <laughs> the Dragon Sword's pilot has even bested the other rangers in combat on his own. Luckily, they helped cool. him break free from Rita's control, and he eagerly joined their fight against the forces of- Wait, I thought all the Power Rangers were basically on the same power level, which is how, um, in the previous Power Rangers mech battle, um, no, not previous one, but the one where it went up against, uh, Zex Marquis. Uh, I don't even remember the name of that one. White Tiger Zord? Is that it? I don't. I don't freaking remember anything now. It's just kind of going out my head. Uh. Evil. But this is. But they said they said they were able to scale. Uh. They were able to get a fuller degree of feats because all the rangers are basically their feats are kind of interchangeable. Tommy Oliver. Tommy wasn't just some rando off the street. This guy is an ex doctor. Was he a doctor at the time? 
Grant six ranger power. Martial artist Gordon is super Super dedicated to ranger work. So Good much choice. so, he kept wearing the tights for years and even mentored other teams. He oh, summons cool. and controls the dragon sword with the dragon dagger by playing it like a flute. Wait, are all knives secretly flutes? They've never uh, Blade side. been flutes. Oh my god, really? Wait a minute, why didn't this come up in poultry science class? Chickens don't like music? How stupid do you think I am? Chickens love music! <gasps> yep, yeah, Blade side. By a sharp note. As the Green Ranger, Tommy draws power from a universe-spanning energy called the Morphin Grid. Yep. His grid connection powers the Dragon Sword, too. He's a superhero and, and a battery. Force. Though, like most other Zords, so enough mean, damage can disrupt the Dragon Sword's connection to the Morphin Grid and take it back. Okay, because they've compared it to the Force. And with the Force, because uh, I don't know how um, straight up this comparison is, but with the Force, you don't have to be like a Jedi or like some sort of specialist to utilize the Force in some way. Um, but, uh, so is it like this, where you don't have to be a ranger to tap into this? Or the bad guys? I'm trying. The Dragon Sword is super strong. It made short work of Rita's monsters and even beat the Megazord, which has an average power output of 50,000 megavolts. Nice. That's the same kind of power as a nuclear warhead. The Megazord was strong enough to punch a 10,000 ton monster about 40 meters off the ground. A punch worth 90 million newtons of force. Nice. The Big D can even fly past escape velocity and reach the moon. That's over 30 times the speed of sound. The Dragon Zord Sounds is also good. extremely durable, possibly more so than any other individual Zord of its generation. The Megazord once threw it into this mountain on the shattered. ground. By comparing the known size velocity. of Dragon Zord's foot to said mountain and applying the energy necessary for violent fragmentation against rock, we determine the destructive force to be worth more than 350 tons of TNT. That sounds yeah. good. The big dragon held yeah, its white own against the upgraded Thunder Megazord, and even what shot the White Tiger Zord, which was supposed to be its better in every way. While it's unlikely the Dragon Zord could actually defeat the Thunder Megazord on its own, so it's, it's a weapon to chance pass with Metal its Gear. ultimate form. That's right, it's got a semi-megazord mode of its own. While each Power Ranger has their own sword, there's been a few times when a Ranger has called on other swords, not to pilot directly, just to combine with theirs. And so, Tommy can summon the Mastodon, Triceratops, and Sabertooth Tiger Zords to form Dragon Zord Fighting Mode. Or Battle Mode. Or Dragon Megazord, he never really settled on a name. Yeah. Well, it's mighty powerful, and turns into So, yeah, they can do that on their own, and it's not considered outside hell. In one shot. Seriously, it never lost a battle against anything Rita threw at it. So, Spoilers! Uh, why don't they always use that? And Rita's magic is devastating enough to obliterate an entire floating she island. She always seemed like she was and having so much fun. I don't know one. who played her, but was she the anything magic else? Candle. Oh, no! I mean, I've Get never even watched this. So. Wax. But powers or no powers, Tommy kept fighting the good fight, eventually regaining his original morphin abilities with the Master Morph. <laughs> Uh, Dragon Zord's parts were inexplicably seen on the Ninja and Shogun Ultra Zords. Older Zords have been sa salvaged to build new ones as possible. This is its ultimate fate. There's probably an in-universe explanation for them just reusing props, right? <laughs> Perhaps one day, the Dragon Zord will rise again. You never know. I'm air guitaring, but you can't see it because it's the all off camera. The year was 1954, less all than right. a decade after Japan was bombarded with the first atomic weapons. The nuclear age had begun. But one of these atomic weapons woke something up. Godzilla! Uh, I should say, I have seen some uh, Godzilla and Godzilla-related stuff on Mystery Science Theater. Uh, I saw one of the Gamera movies, and honestly, even though it was cheesy as all get out, um... I kind of liked it. It was the one with the the two little kids. Uh, one of them was uh, local Japanese, and the other one was the kid from a military base. He was, I think, American. And honestly, I really liked that aspect, and I liked the friendship between their mothers. I thought that was really fun, uh, especially in the time frame that this took place in. 
you know, and I kind of feel like if it had uh, gone a little more into that, um, it probably would have been a better movie overall. It still was entertaining, even without the mystery science theater aspect. Um, it, it was just really, really, really cheesy. <laughs> kind of like um, something you'd put on in your backyard. You know, something you'd bring the neighborhood around to watch. And yeah. uh, this ginormous radioactive kaiju decimated Japan. Things looked pretty bad until a scientist deployed a bomb strong enough to kill the monster. The Oxygen Destroyer. What was the deal with the exactly fish tank? what it says on the tin. Right. Dr. Serizawa's bomb could specifically target and destroy oxygen molecules, oh, liquefying okay. most living tissue. This weapon was so dangerous, Serizawa feared its very uh, existence it's okay. I got these threatened fish the entire anywhere. human race. So he went down martyr style, taking out Godzilla and all knowledge of his weird bomb. That's another thing, I like all how they generally have female Godzilla's scientists, bones. too. In that Probably era, that was the best. Still, a weapon like that might have come in handy now. when, a few decades later, another Godzilla showed up. Surprise, okay. <laughs> Turns out Japan had been so. the target of many different types he is of kaiju right for years me, and had isn't developed he? an anti-monster defense force to combat them. Unfortunately, their super powerful maser cannons barely even scratched this new Godzilla. Yeah. <laughs> Look at him. Didn't even care. Like the it oxygen destroyer even before, care. Japan needed a new weapon to combat Godzilla. They gathered their foremost experts in the fields of robotics, microwaves, low temperature physics, and someone whose work can only be described as cyber necromancy. Nice! Together, these leading scientists developed a revolutionary weapon like nothing before it. Mega Godzilla! Woo! Sure, technically this isn't the first I'm Mega Godzilla now. we've seen, but it's certainly the deadliest and the most unique. So much so, it was given its own distinct name, Kiru. A combination of kanji meaning machine and dragon. Cool. Hear you? Sounds lame. I'll stick with Mega Godzilla, thank you. <laughs> Battery life two hours. That's really inefficient. <laughs> DNA computers. Standing 60 meters tall and weighing 40,000 tons. I want to make a nano machine joke, but I already cyber monster is idea. loaded with all sorts of weapons. Rocket launchers, rail cannons, grappling wires, spinning drill hands, a battering ram jetpack, and even retractable I'm assuming that's very little. Creed blades with an extra zap. And just like Zilla himself, Mecha G fires laser beams from his mouth. This twin maser cannon is twice as powerful as the maser guns that successfully killed other non-Godzilla giant monsters. Nice. Kiru is certainly skilled in melee combat and is surprisingly athletic for its size. Cool. Look at it go! Yeah. However, with its enormous arsenal, it is far better suited to long-range strikes. Like with its ultimate weapon, I mean, it's the, the Absolute cannon alert. Zero Cannon. Damn! So it's like a super ice beam? As the name suggests, it unequivocally brings its target's temperature to absolute zero, or zero Kelvin. But this beam isn't just freezing its target, it's literally destroying all of its existing energy at once. A practically impossible feat of physics. Practically this results impossible. in crushing the entire target from within at an atomic level. Oh my god. Oh. Zilla! Uh, speaking of which, Kiru is actually built around the skeletal remains of the original Godzilla. That makes giving sense. Giving him all the size and strength of the King of the Monsters. So or it's kind of like you're pulling off a robotic weekend at Bernie's with <laughs> old man Godzilla. Or to turn bones. it into a Dragon Amazing. Ball via bridge. Kiru reference. also utilizes that biochemical and molecular based DNA computers, which are actually based on real life experimental technology. Mm -hmm. This infused Godzilla's own DNA to go. improve it's operation okay. speed no. and give Kiru subconscious motor control. Sort of a simple AI, which lets it perform some limited actions on its own. Exactly mm. like my own Cyber Goose. With the skeleton of a goose and some extra parts I had lying around, I say he's From a extra masterpiece goose. of modern science. Well, he's got two heads now, so do we call him a goose or a geese? It's a goose. Just one goose. But two heads make two goose, therefore a geese. It's a goose! Ah! Oh, see, that's an even oh, more yeah, this goose. version's much better. Kiru is piloted by Lieutenant Akane Yashiro, a longtime member of the Anti-Megalosaurus Force, and your standard self-loathing anime protagonist. 
She thinks she's worthless because she has no parents and accidentally got some of her friends killed. So now nobody really likes her, which is a uh, real bummer. But okay, so I wonder how her height and weight are going to fall into this. Just like uh, Tommy's height and weight. Uh, does that mean they're going to start having fisticuffs going on? Because I think that would be really cool if they leap out of their mechs. <laughs> Either that or it starts with that. Hey, cheer up, lady! You get to fight giant lizards with a big-ass killer robot! And that's nice. freaking awesome! Akane doesn't technically pilot from within Kiru, but rather from a nearby jet plane, the oh. AC-3 White Heron which can fly over 900 kilometers per hour. Oh, Under Akane's control, Kiru has battled Godzilla several times and always came out on top. But plot twist, Akane isn't Mechagodzilla's only pilot. It turns out there's someone else behind the controls. Godzilla a ghost itself? in the machine. It's the spirit of the original Godzilla. Surprise again, bitches, it's Ghost Robot. The DNA mind Yay. of Godzilla can oh, wrestle hey, the mech from Akane at any point causing her to lose complete control. Giving the king another chance to trash Japan again. Ah, uh, always fun to relive the good old days. Though it is strongly implied Akane and Kiru came to an understanding of sorts, realizing strongly that they were each implied? shadows of okay. a tragic past struggling to find purpose in life. Like college roommates. Regardless of who is steering the ship, Kiru is an extremely tough machine. He's lifted and thrown Godzilla. Just a moment. And we're back. Sorry about that. The phone was ringing. Around like a sack of potatoes. Doesn't and make this me want to watch this the movie. The big G weighed twenty-five thousand tons. Kiru actually survived being at the epicenter of its own absolute zero blast and oh. multiple direct hits from Godzilla's atomic breath attack, which is even strong enough to overpower the absolute zero. Kiru oh. is even fast enough to dodge the atomic breath, which, based on this instance where an older Mechagodzilla forced the beam into space, likely travels faster than Mach 2. Flew from Alaska to Russia in minutes while carrying another creature. Uh, depends. Are we talking like the main part of Alaska to the main part of Russia, or are we talking the Diomedes? Little and big Diomede islands that are like two and a half miles apart. And you can take a plane between them in like five minutes, so. Speeds. Kiru itself could also fly from Alaska to the middle of Russia while carrying another kaiju middle in just of, a few okay. minutes. Given how quickly Kiru's fuel burns in flight, in order to make it, Kiru was likely flying around Mach 40. But that's sadly the Mecha Monster's biggest flaw. Its battery life is worse than the goddamn Nintendo Switch. While the White Herons can use microwave tech to Yeah, just gonna put it on this. People told me that the 3DS's battery life was laughably short. Like, it was just like a couple hours. I can play that thing all day. Like, literally, like, from noon to midnight. And the battery is fine. The Switch, on the other hand, I heard the same thing. And so I, I got it, and I was thinking, ah, oh, well, you know, they said that about the 3DS, and they were full of it. The Switch, they are absolutely right about. I mean, the Switch Lite is apparently much better because it has, like, a better processor and stuff. But, yeah, the original Switch, you are got, like, two hours. Charge Kiru on the fly, a full charge only runs for about two hours at most. And using more intensive features like Jet Flight and the Absolute Zero Cannon drains it much, much faster. In fact, just one use of the Absolute Zero drains 40%. But who cares when he's so badass he can tear you apart in just a few minutes. With all this power at his metal fingertips, this is one epic machine. No man or beast stands a chance against the might of Mecha Godzilla. Kiryu, That sounds like a really cool all movie. Right, the Someone tell me what that specific movie is. All possibilities. But first, I've got a kaiju-sized hunger that only no. Blue Apron can satisfy. By now, you... No. Okay, so... It sounds like Mechagodzilla is stronger, but Dragonzord is more durable. So, uh, the thing is, they're definitely not going to be fighting for two hours, but if that chest laser takes... 40% of its battery life. Uh, 
Mecha Godzilla is going to kind of be reduced to just standing there. And, um, I mean, I imagine Akane could shoot some stuff from her plane, but I have a feeling she's going to be taken out pretty quickly. And Mecha Godzilla is just going to be relying on its, I guess, Godzilla instincts. I don't know if they're going to come to the point where it's like they came to an understanding, but uh, if she's taken out, then it's not going to, you know, that understanding has gone out the window. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's put me up here. Ah, we're just starting right away, huh? Fight! Yeah, there's that tail. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Nice work, Dragon Sword. Let's crush this tin can. Drinking straw time. Oh, I like those effects. Are they taking the um, audio from the shows? I, I'm not familiar enough with either of them. I don't remember it being able to do that, but that's pretty cool. Ooh. Activating that fast is gonna be trouble. No, you dodged it! Okay, so now it's down like, what, 42% from the energy it was already using? 41, maybe? Pretty soon, Tommy's gonna get wise to- yeah, there we go. Aww. Yeah, see, I told you. I thought just she was gonna get taken out pretty quickly. And now it's fighting on Godzilla Instinct. Fighting it in the crotch there, which would be much more effective on an actual living target. Rather than just a semi-sentient one. These basically are divine beasts to get down to it. That didn't even come into contact with his mouth. Come together. Of course, he's wearing a mask anyway, so... Don't know how he plays it from there. Mode, powered up and ready for action. Let's finish this. I love those overly elaborate, like, silent movie almost, exaggerated movements they make. Okay, so this thing is going to be pretty much out of battery at any point. Yeah, I'm awaiting some finishing blow any second now. Yeah, you're up close range, and that's where Mecha Godzilla is weakest. But it has that tail. Yeah, yeah, I kind of figured. Yeah, well, it's not out yet. Ooh. Oh, there's that cannon. Ooh. Oh, and it can survive its own... Oh, it can survive its own, uh, zero... G, not zero G. There we go, and shatter! Shatter! Uh, absolute zero attack, yeah. KO! Oh man, talk about a close one! Yeah. Finding the victor here wasn't easy. Both have performed amazing feats of strength and durability, and both wielded massive arsenals of unbelievable devastation. Akane definitely proved herself fighting Godzilla a few times, though Tommy did but have she was the definite weak piloting there. mechs and fighting monsters for years and years. Simply Plus, on account of being outside of skill and experience are incredibly important, it doesn't always triumph over raw power. 
That's what she said. I know. Compared to Kiru, the Dragon Sword was rather lightweight, with far less impressive feats of strength. Yeah, while well, Dragon Sword could match the Mega Sword, who could lift a 10,000 ton monster, Mega Godzilla tossed around a 25,000 ton Godzilla. More than double nice. the weight, Mega G certainly had the advantage up close. And also from a distance. Oh. Kiru's arsenal was overall better suited to long range combat thanks to a wider assortment of missile and beam weapons. Simply put, Kiru possessed more options for controlling and ending this fight. Like how they both had instant kill moves, but only one of those depended on getting right up close. Plus, while fighting mode's max power wasn't too clear, it could be another with battle the where the ultimate victory is just. Remember Special, how Rita it's blew uh, up ultimate an attack. Easily one of the most impressive at the beginning of the fight. feats in the Rangers' early years. Based on this image, we can measure the exact scale of the island. To blow that shit up, you'd need a blast of at least 2.6 gigatons of TNT. So Dragon Zord's Ultra Drill Staff was likely in the same ballpark in terms of power output. However, this pales in comparison to the Absolute Zero Cannon. Yeah, makes Here, sense. Here, it's destroying the real-life Prince Hotel New Tower and several surrounding buildings. I Using see. the known scale of these structures, the energy output to destroy them must equal 128 teratons of TNT. Ooh. That's uh, over 49,000 times more powerful. And don't Air forget, Mega G once survived being in the middle of this blast. There was no way Dragon Zord could put down this tough son of a Zilla. Dragon Zord's arsenal and Tommy's skill certainly made this an intense match, but they were clearly a reincarnation of his awesome power and unwavering durability. I'm just glad they didn't let the fight drag on. The winner is Kiru. Mega Godzilla! Ooh, it did make me want to see hey, that movie. So tell me episode, if you exactly what the movie yourself, is called. You can get it by clicking the link in the description below. And check out on the right side okay. of the screen next okay, to Ben. You got, can watch more stuff. Here we got. Okay, someone from Naruto and Hie. Oh, okay. Nice. I know nothing about them. I've heard of Sasuke. I've heard of Hie. <laughs> but I think a ninja battle is going to be easier for me to... to um, look at, uh, not look at, to, um, ultimately understand. Tech stuff, I mean, I'm a smart person, but tech stuff just kind of, so, uh, all right, well, that was fun, and I will see you in three weeks. Uh, I don't really have much to say. I pretty much said everything, uh, about it, so I have to get set up for the Nintendo Direct, which is in nine minutes. So I will see you then. Um, have fun. Uh, I like that battle. Um, it really could have gone either way. I figured it wasn't down and out when it got impaled, but I figured that was going to damage the battery. Like that itself wouldn't be a killing blow, but I figured it was going to could have led to a one. So yeah. I mean, okay. So I'm Blackjack Abby. Uh, you're not, and I will see you in a few minutes.